Um, the next talk is going to be Andy Hilfiger in conversation with Elizabeth Way about Tommy Hilfiger and hip hop artists. We know Liz Way very well. Andy Hilfiger also is quite well known to us. He's been blurring the lines between music and fashion for decades. He began his fashion career at the age of 12, selling jeans at his brother Tommy Hilfiger's first business, The People's Place. Hilfiger relocated to New York City to perform in the downtown rock scene and was instrumental in introducing the Tommy Hilfiger brand to pop culture. He currently serves as the Vice President of Business Development for Authentic Brands Groups. Please join me in welcoming Andy Hilfiger and Liz Way. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Thank very, very- Thank you for having me, FIT. So if you've been to the exhibition, you know that we were able to feature an interview with Andy and Tommy Hilfiger in the exhibition, having a fabulous conversation. We're only able to show two, three minutes in the exhibition. Um, but we, were, from what we actually recorded, I mean, it was just the most fascinating story. So I'm so happy that you're here to share this with our audience. So I wanna start by asking you, if you can tell me a little bit about your relationship to music and fashion um, and when hip hop became a part of that. Okay. Well, this story's probably never been told, but I was in a rock band with a rock and roll band with my brother Billy, and Tommy was doing his fashion, and Tommy would dress us in cool clothes to go on stage. And this was in the 70s. I was in high school playing rock and roll in the clubs. What, in, what did you play? I uh, play bass and guitar. <laughs> and um, I met this guy who was doing a Tougher Than Leather Run DMC's movie. And he's like, hey, you know, do you want to work on the movie? I'm like, yeah, I'd love to, you know. So I was working on the Tougher Than Leather with Russell Simmons and Run DMC and Beastie Boys, Slick Rick, LL. And I overheard them say, hey, we're looking for a clothing store to shoot some scenes. And uh, I said, my brother has a store on the Upper West Side. And they said, you know, can we go there and shoot, you think? So I called Tommy. He had one little store on Columbus Ave. Tommy's like, yeah, that's cool. So the next day I said, hey, you can shoot in his store. They were like, oh, we found a place in Soho. But um, Jay, the DJ, said, your brother has clothes? I'm like, yeah, you want, yeah, you want some? I can bring you some stuff. So he was probably one of the first hip hop kids that were wearing the uh, were wearing Tommy and then everybody started wanting some gear so I'd bring them clothes to the set um, so that was one of my first experiences before that Billy worked at Manny's music my brother Billy who now has passed away but um, he said hey, I met this guy Andy called African Bambato and he's got these drum beats that are so crazy. And we're rock and roll. Mm -hmm. But Billy really turned me on to some of that, some of the beats and stuff like that. that that's so exciting. I mean, I just feel like that time in New York was like, it yeah. sounds like the most fun. Lots of cool clubs. Yeah. So can you talk about your role in Tommy Hilfiger? You've been so, such an integral part yeah. of it. Well, when I went to Tommy Hilfiger Company to work, mm -hmm. previously, Tommy had little boutiques upstate and we sold jeans and like I told you about the band and the clothes and stuff. But uh, when I first went to Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy was always like, hey Andy, we gotta dress musicians. So one of my first jobs was to take Eman to the warehouse for her and David Bowie to get clothing. <laughs> and then uh, lots of kids were coming up to me on the streets saying, Andy, they're saying your brother's name in this song. So. It, I took the tape to Tommy's apartment on the Upper West, and it was Grand Puba in the Brand Nubians mm -hmm. rapping about Hill Figure, Jerbo hanging baggy Hill Figure on top, yes. and then Mary J. What's the 411 with Grand Puba? So I played it for Tommy. He's like, This is crazy. They're saying my name in a song. <laughs> I'm like, Yeah, this is, you know, the streets are lit up right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, everyone's rocking Tommy. And, uh, then 
Tommy and I went to Hong Kong to do a racing line called Team Lotus because we were sponsoring a race car. Mm -hmm. And on the way back, we took the red eye. We flew to Hong Kong to LA, the red eye to JFK. Mm -hmm. It was six in the morning. We have our trunks of clothes. And I see the brand Nubians. And it's funny because they just had done a video in New York with Ralph McDaniels, who's coming <laughs> up. And I remember all this yes. stuff. And uh, I said, Tommy, that's who's rapping about you. And they were all de decked out in like Polo and Tommy and North Face, all geared out. And yeah. I said, that's, this was six in the morning. Yeah. And they just had performed on Living Color. Mm -hmm. And so they, were, they took the red eye. So I walked over to them and I said, hey, I'm Andy, but this is Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger. Mm -hmm. You guys look awesome. So they were like, that's Tommy Hilfiger? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's my brother. And, he, and Tommy went up to him and said, wow, I love how you guys are wearing my clothes. This is crazy. So Tommy invited him to a showroom and said, you know, hey, tomorrow, come on up. Mm -hmm. So we dressed them for their tour. I don't know. They left with thousands of dollars worth of gear. Yeah. Really great stuff. And... Um, after that, it got the word got out on the on the streets and with the stylists and musicians and videos that hey, Tommy Hilfiger, you know, call Andy if you want. So all the stylists started mm -hmm. calling, and uh, I put a team together, a street team, which clothing companies didn't put street teams together. <laughs> it was the record companies. Yeah. But Peter Paul and Nitsy, who's here today. Um, then Kadada Jones, and Koshan, we had a whole team, and we were going to the clubs with rugbies and t-shirts and hats and really putting the gear out there. Um, and I've got more stories, but go ahead. <laughs> I mean, this is what I love about streetwear. You know, like April Walker talked about this too, but like looking at how the music industry is run and applying that to fashion and yeah. like creating these Well, really that's clothes. always been, our philosophy, mm -hmm. it's music and fashion, pop culture. Yeah. So how large a role did hip hop play in the exposure and then the sales of Tommy Hilfiger's during this time? So we're thinking about from the 80s to the 2000s, yeah. all within that period. Well, in about probably 1992, it really started happening with, with the hip hop and the youth were really like, this is great. And then they'd see your grand poobas and you know, everybody wearing the clothes. So it really, the business de definitely blew up and expanded and we were in all the department stores across the country and then we would do appearances. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh good, that image is here. That's the next story. Yes. So, uh, Tommy, Michael H, my singer, and um, myself, we were at the, an after party for the um, MTV Music Awards on the Upper West Side at the Natural Museum of History. And we saw Snoop and these guys. And I was like, Tommy, that's who's rapping with Dr. Dre. He's like, oh, wow. So same thing. We started talking to him, hanging out with him. And uh, I said to Snoop, call me mm -hmm. and if you guys want some gear. And he was like, yeah, I, I know what the gear is. I, I like, you know, because we were in L.A. in the stores, too. Yeah. So... I never thought, you know, I didn't think Snoop would call me the next morning, you know, whatever. So I go in the office the next morning and there's a, my phone was beeping and uh, I called it and it was, yo Andy, it's Snoop. <laughs> I want to come up to the showroom and see the clothes. Yeah. I'm like, great. He goes, do you mind if I bring the dog pound? I'm like, bring, bring him. <laughs> so that morning, Snoop and the dog pound showed up. We showed him the whole design room, the showrooms. Tommy showed him the suits and the whole thing. Then they left. They went back to L.A. And a couple weeks later, um, Snoop called me on a Friday and said, hey, I need, I'm in town. I need some gear. I'm like, uh, come on up. He goes, I can't. I'm rehearsing for Saturday Night Live. And I was like, oh. Well, he goes, can you come to my hotel tonight? I'm like, when? He's like, midnight. I'm like, sure. <laughs> And um, so I went to his hotel with a Nitsy, who's here, and uh, I brought the rugby's, all this stuff. I go to the hotel, 
we hung out with them for a while. They loved the gear. And um, we split. And then the next day, Tommy called me about a uh, quarter of 12 and said, hey, Andy, turn on Saturday Night Live. Snoop and these guys are rocking. I said, I forgot to tell you. We were at <laughs> Hotel Maclode last night. But what happened was that Sunday, the stores sold out of the rugby's and yeah. the stores sold out. And um, then that Monday, all the salespeople around the country were saying, what happened? And we were like, oh, it must have been because Snoop was on Saturday Night Live and it was his first album and it just blew up. And uh, that's really the night that Tommy Hilfiger became hip on the streets. I mean, Grand Pooba definitely lit the, the streets up, but Snoop took it to the next level. And then Aaliyah, yeah. um, a friend from Atlantic Records called from the rock and roll side and said, oh, I have this uh, artist named Aaliyah. She wants to model, she's really beautiful. I'm like, I'll send her up. She comes up and she's like, I love the gear. I said, well, we don't really have w women's yet. Mm -hmm. But um, she goes, oh, I don't care. I like the men's stuff. I wear it baggy. So I said, well, listen, in two weeks, we're shooting a campaign. Do you want to be in it? And she said, oh, I'd love to model in it. So we go to the shoot in L.A., and Kadada Jones, Quincy's daughter, was working for us, styling, and she knew everybody. And um, we go to the shoot, and we didn't have the women's clothes, so we took men's underwear cut the crotch out, and that was the bandeau. Oh my God. And actually my sister Ginny was styling with us too. I gotta give props to, to everybody. I always thought that was a t-shirt, I had no idea. No, 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 no. The t-shirt was the men's t-shirt. That's another story. Okay, this that t-shirt right there is, was a men's t-shirt, and I think Kadata cut it up and just made the bandeau. Mm -hmm. But the jeans, they were men's. They're yeah. men's jeans and men's underwear in men's flip-flops, so she, you know, she really set this style, and we styled this, and that's Mark Ronson, who was our DJ since he was 16, and now he's, uh, Mark Ronson's like. Mark Ronson. Producing, uh, <laughs> yeah. I have um, to tell you that this image of Aaliyah growing up, like, I thought this was the coolest thing. This is exactly It was tomboy sexy. Yeah. And uh, she pulled it off, and she was the sweetest, most gracious person. She also was in a few fashion shows for us. And uh, one, Quincy Jones came out at the end and it was Aaliyah and Usher and Wu-Tang and it, it was the uh, Vibe fashion show. And uh, Kadada and I put that together and it was amazing. I have the video. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely reach out to the archivist. I know PBH has an amazing archive so that definitely has to be in there. Yeah. Um, what you, would you there say are the most significant Tommy Hilfiger slash hip hop moments besides Aaliyah and uh, Snoop Dogg? Well, th the most iconic was always like, and the most exciting thing, seeing the clothing on, on the video, you, you know, you turn on MTV and they're, you know, whoa. It was a whole new way of advertising. Um, that was, and then hearing Q-Tip, Puba, Raekwon, these guys mentioning Hill Figure in the songs, mm -hmm. and it was on the radio, and it was like, this is crazy. And uh, Quincy Jones opened a magazine called Vibe, and we were the first clothing company to advertise, oh, also wow. the source. So Hill Figure was definitely, from the beginning, diverse. Mm -hmm. with everything, with uh, the marketing. I remember you guys were talking about even just playing hip-hop music at your fashion shows and seeing all the kind of the buttoned-up editors. Oh, like, we, we went to London. The clothing wasn't in London yet. It was only f the fragrance, except Ali G had the fake Tommy Gear <laughs> hat on, you know, <laughs> yeah, Barat. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we did something different. We brought Tretch <laughs> from Naughty by Nature and um, all the fashion press was like, you know, getting ready to review the shows, the show. And all of a sudden, Tretch came out and started rapping. 
and uh, Kate Moss and Naomi, and it was like a party. It was a hip hop explosion on stage, and we. It was the first time the English press has, had ever seen something like that, yeah. and that was that was lit. <laughs> <laughs> so you and your brother have been personally active in supporting hip hop designers. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like I said, I worked on Tougher Than Leather with Russell. He didn't know who I was. You know, my brother had a story. He didn't know who I was. But a few years later, I guess he heard that, you know, about Tommy and I. And uh, he really liked the clothing. So he would call and say, hey, listen, I want to see what you guys are up to. Where a lot of companies would say, we're not going to show you our back room. We're, yeah. that's, we were like, come on up. And we showed him the design room, the what we were doing while he was starting Fat Farm. Mm -hmm. And also, we would offer connections, and and we did that with Puffy. Yeah. And Damon Dash, Jay. We've pretty much helped everybody. I mean, I think it's amazing because, you know, the fashion industry is actually really small, even yeah. though it's really big. But, like, you know, to be able to build that sense of community, I mean, there's, it seems so counterintuitive to business, but it actually is. Yeah. Hey, listen. It comes back. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you do something good for someone, someone's going to do something good for you, and that's just was, was our philosophy, and um, that's how we work. <laughs> so what do you think is the lasting legacy of Hip Hop's love for Tommy Hilfiger? Well, we were definitely one of the early pioneers in, you know, it's part of our history and it always will be. There's a lot of new hip hop artists coming out all the time. Um, the company's doing things with different hip hop artists. And so it, it's an ongoing thing because hip hop is part of part of life. Yeah. It, it wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. a quick thing. And I knew it. I mean, music and fashion, it's crazy. I mean, feel that's always been part of like the DNA. Always. Even in the 60s, I mean, how Tommy really got into fashion. He would look at the album covers of Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles and the Stones and, you know, Sly and the Family Stone and see this stuff like, oh, I, I, where do we get this stuff? Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about just like, like the what did the clothing look like? Why was it so appealing with what you guys were putting out? Well, in the beginning, Tommy took the classics and made them hip, meaning they weren't so buttoned up and tight. Color oversized logos. The stores didn't want logos, but the customer was asking for them. So mm -hmm. finally they were like, okay, we'll, we'll do logos. Um, but also sports, yeah. doing hockey jerseys, football jerseys, that, that kind of fashion. This stuff, I mean, it's, you know, denim. Um, Tommy jeans, when we launched, you know, all the denim brands are like, you know, jeans, denim, this and that, Tommy is like, you know, mixing athletic with denim. And that's what that was mm -hmm. with mixing athletic. And that became Tommy Jeans. So it was special. And then the reflector stuff, you know, we came out with some new techniques of printing. Oh, also when Sean John came out, we had these T-shirts that were called Ubertex, I think. And it was raised mm -hmm. like rubber. And we had an exclusive thing with them. Puffy wanted to do them for Sean John. Uh-huh. Because you remember those Sean John yes. teas? And uh, we said, yes, please do them for, our, for him. So. Well, it's, I mean, one of the things I think is so important about American fashion and brands like Tommy Hilfiger are those stories that, I mean, maybe like magazines don't cover them, but like technical innovations and then how one company takes a chance and does something in a technical way and then other companies start picking up and then all of a sudden it's everywhere in fashion but it yeah. you you know you have to invest in the initial yeah i mean this Aaliyah thing is like forever yeah no i, I think it's an iconic look it, everybody's tried doing different versions of it mm -hmm. and uh one of the things that we have in the exhibition is Jeremy O'Harris's uh, Met look um, oh, cool. that was inspired by the image that we saw, the yellow, Aaliyah in the yellow uh, uh, puffer with the silver lining. Oh, that was uh, her tour. Yeah. 
and that was a special line with the reflector fabrics, and um, that was cool. And the fact that, you know, a playwright like Jeremy O'Harris is like, this was such an important moment for him growing up, mm -hmm. and then he, you know, gets accustomed Tommy Hilfiger, I remember him like sitting on the red carpet at the Met Ball, smoking. Sure. Uh, <laughs> in this custom, this, this like amazing, like, you know, ball cape based on Aaliyah, based on uh, Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah. And this American sportswear design, I think it says so much about how hip hop has crossed over into just Absolutely. Well, the, the luxury designers are looking at hip hop. I mean, for their, their aesthetics and ideas and, you know, yeah. And the the way the hip hop kids, the artists, the way they wear the clothes and put them together in the swagger it carries and the draping. I mean, a lot of people could have worn the Aaliyah look, but it it was just a, a vibe mm -hmm. and uh, an attitude. So when when you were all like kind of in the design room thinking about the clothes and then did you kind of anticipate, you know, you, you, we talk about how like Tommy Hilfiger was so much less buttoned up than what the classics were, but did you kind of anticipate the way it would be worn? And if, and after that, did it kind of change the style, yeah, the design? Absolutely. The whole comfortable, oversized, uh, washed out, the color, all that stuff was a big part of, you know, because if you think of the classics, it's very buttoned up and Tommy took those and flipped them. It like remixed the classics. And uh, and then what we would do with design is a theme every season. Well, there was sale gear. We sponsored the race team, so we did Team Lotus race gear, ski, and we would do different themes. And to me, they were like different albums, if you take it with the music mm -hmm. thinking. Um, and always basics. Yeah. So the setup in the stores had the cool stuff, the fashion, but always basics that you can go back to. And basics are like what most people wear most of the time. No, absolutely. What, it, like, what we all wear. Yeah. Can you talk about a little bit about like those, what I love about kind of like how brands interact with things like sports, like racing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like that would be the only way I would ever interact with racing is right. like through fashion. So can you talk about how like your brand like kind of, you know, why, why yeah, sports? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about, well, mixing active with denim Tommy jeans. Mm -hmm. But um, Team Lotus was a um, Formula, Formula One team in Grand Prix racing that we sponsored, which means we made clothes for them, yeah. for their pit crew and hats and the whole thing. And our name was on the, the Tommy name was on the car. So instead of just like, oh, there's a sponsorship, we would take that concept and do a whole line based on it and put it in the stores so everybody could have a part of that. Yeah. From race fans to, you know, Q-Tip used to wear Team Lotus on stage. Which I love, yeah. I love yeah. how, like, you know, things that, you know, skiing, you know, race car driving, yeah. we see, I, we digest all these through kind of hip-hop artists and hip-hop fashion and American brands when, like, you know, I, I do not, I'm not interested in car racing, I'll say You're that. You're not? I'm not, but the clothing is so cool, and so it's a way to kind of spread these, like, kind of We cultures. did it with Ferrari, which, you know, who doesn't want a Ferrari, but then, yeah. you know, you can get a Ferrari t-shirt or a hat, so we'd, we've done that with a lot of different themes of the company, so there was always a theme. So Mountain climbing, outdoor, sail gear was a very big, uh, part of the brand and it sale gear was so cool that we would do it again another season and and so we definitely talk about that in the exhibition about how sports like you know takes on a life of its own when fashion mm -hmm. takes it up so I'm just want to end with how do you see kind of at this moment like hip-hop and Tommy Hilfiger like who are the artists or the styles it seems like the 90s are coming back like that period but like how is it well Tommy at this moment Tommy himself and his team are always looking for what's next. Mm -hmm. And that's always been his philosophy. Something's great and happening, okay, that's great, but what's next? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, he's he's working with a lot of people now. Well, Glorilla, I'm a new artist, uh, just played the other night at Irving Plaza. She was in all the new Tommy Jean oh, stuff. Oh, great. And, uh, the, I mean, it feels like perennial, right? Like, And then never... he did a collaboration with, um, Zendaya. Yes. 
and that was cool. I really love that because you know it was in Harlem and it was like so yeah. it was it was like a love letter to American fashion, right? In such a beautiful way. It was beautiful. Yeah. So. Well, I really want to thank you for sharing your stories because I love what I really love about it is the personal connection. It almost seems like the Wild West now. Like I have no idea how easy it is to interact with artists now, but I love that in the beginning it was just like running into people at the airport or getting a call. It just felt like such a small world. Yeah. And we were also probably one of the, I don't want to say the first because whatever, but we were one of the early, uh, we were one of the brands to put celebrities on the runway. I mean, Mary J opened our Tommy Jean show. Uh, Eve, I could keep going. A lot of people were on our, oh, when we did New York Fashion Week in like 1995, Puffy, Tretch, Delvin from Jodeci, like oh, everybody was on our runway. It's like, in like high, high fashion, it yeah. wasn't baggy jeans. It was like collection. And this was like years before we start to see like that celebrity element really move into New York Fashion Week. Absolutely. <laughs> you Do you have a it. question, it sir? <laughs> Thank you so much. I love, I, I think that's what's so fun about hip hop and fashion history is these personal stories and getting to hear In about these them. these stories, there's a lot of stories, but uh, this one was with me the whole time, my wife, Kim. <laughs> I think that deserves it. Ah. <laughs> the night that Tommy called at quarter of 12 and said, turn on Saturday night, Kim's like, why is he calling? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but, uh, Lots of stories. We went on a bus tour with Aaliyah and everybody. We hit up Washington, Philly, Miami, and it was like a band going on tour. Yeah. And then we'd go into the stores and do fashion shows. So always thinking ahead what's next. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>